Picture yourself sitting down at your computer, opening your web browser, and logging onto Facebook when a government-endorsed censor page pops up instead. Since when does the United States government censor websites? Doesn't this violate citizens' First Amendment rights? How can this possibly be legal? The censorship issue started in October of 2011 when Lamar Smith, a representative from Texas, proposed a bill called the Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA. SOPA would enable the U.S. Department of Justice, as well as copyright holders, to shut down websites that violate any kind of copyright laws. A website could be blocked or shut down just for posting a link to copyrighted material. This would allow larger corporations to immediately shut down emerging search engines and social networking sites, as well as a slew of others. If the website is not based in the U.S., no problem. The U.S. Attorney General can force advertisers like Google and payment processors such as PayPal and Visa not to do business with the site. CNET correspondent Larry Downs stated, A bill that was to target only the worst of the worst foreign websites committing blatant and systematic copyright and trademark infringement has morphed inexplicably into an unrestricted hunting license for media companies to harass anyone, foreign or domestic, who questions their timetable for digital transformation. The MPAA, or Motion Picture Association of America, favors SOPA as do the Recording Industry Association of America and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. These industries want to shut down sites that infringe on their copyrights, even if it's only something like a picture or link. A study examined approximately 100 rogue sites and found that these sites attracted more than 53 billion visits per year, which average out to approximately 9 visits for every one person on Earth. Companies such as Google, Facebook, Twitter, Zynga, eBay, Mozilla, Yahoo, PayPal, AOL, and LinkedIn are opposed to SOPA. In an open letter to Congress, they stated, The bill as drafted would expose law-abiding U.S. internet and technology companies to new, uncertain liabilities, provide rights of action, and technology mandates that would require monitoring of websites. The bill would also require internet service providers such as Comcast, Verizon, and even cell phone carriers to block users from navigating to certain sites. United States citizens are, for the most part, opposed to the bill. People want the internet in the U.S. to remain open and not follow in China's footsteps. Another problem with approving SOPA would be that it would serve as the foot in the door by which the government could shut down even more domains on the internet that they find offensive. SOPA could lead to the eventual censorship of the entire internet to the point that it becomes a propagandized mess of government material. SOPA would violate the First Amendment by taking away freedom of speech. The bill also has the potential to harm internet security. 83 of the internet's most prominent inventors, founders, and engineers in an open letter to Congress said, censorship of the internet infrastructure will inevitably cause network errors and security problems. This is true in China, Iran, and other countries that censor the network today. It will be just as true of American censorship. This may sound bad already, but if SOPA is allowed to pass through Congress, global human rights struggles will be harmed. In countries whose judicial systems are less independent and where legal defense for bloggers is rare, abuse of copyright laws to stifle activism is much easier. The Russian government last year used a crackdown on software piracy as an excuse to confiscate activists' computers. Entrepreneurs worry about the bill stunting intellectual and technological advancement in the country. Others worry that open source projects would be killed by SOPA and that it would lead to domain blocking which could lead to a loss in jobs. SOPA aims to crack down on copyright infringement, which appears to be a good idea. However, YouTube videos that use copyrighted music or video clips and possibly even show pictures would be violating copyright laws and YouTube could be shut down. The same would happen for Google with videos and images, or social networking sites like Facebook or Tumblr where people can post copyrighted material that could cause the entire site to be shut down. Even a link to copyrighted material on Twitter to anything that even slightly violates copyright law could cause Twitter to be shut down. In order for sites to avoid this problem, they would have to have people monitor every post comment, 
or link that would ever appear or get traced back to their site before it could be finalized. This would mean it could take hours for one simple status to be posted on Facebook, as it would need human approval to make sure it did not violate any laws. People can stop the creation and enforcement of laws like SOPA by spreading the word about how it would violate our rights. To help keep SOPA from becoming a law, visit www.americancensorship.org to call or email Congress. The more people that speak out against the Stop Online Piracy Act, the better chance there is it will fail. SOPA would enable the United States government to remove or block websites that infringe on any type of copyright even without first contacting the owner of the page. If SOPA is allowed to pass, it will hurt global human rights struggles, harm internet security, and violate Americans' First Amendment rights.